Hello, this is going to be an evaluation of my last video that I released where I performed an experiment for MC Tune. When I set out to conduct the experiment, I only had one goal in mind, which was to capture a positive correlation between how much an air compressor weighs when it is empty compared to when it's at 100 psi. In the case of my air compressor, it stops at 100 psi. And I think that I demonstrated that fairly well. When I set the experiment up, I just went around the place looking at various objects that I had so that I could rig up some kind of makeshift device that would allow me to test that. To quantify how much the air actually weighed was not something that I set out to do as I created the experiment, but I did have enough foresight at the very start when I was doing this to take various measurements like the length of this side of the board and the dimensions of the air compressor, etc. So that maybe I could use that for further analysis and to see how close to the accepted weight of air I could get with such a sketchy setup as I had. In the video I used a measuring tape and I just took some pictures from a discrete distance and none of those measurements really were overly precise. As I was taking more and more measurements, I started to put them into a spreadsheet to see if I could quantify things. And initially the scale was set to ounces, I believe. At some point when I realized that the range was only somewhere around half an ounce, for example, I set the scale for the remainder of the tests to use grams so that I could get a much better resolution, at least on the display. And the initial ones I normalized to grams by converting ounces to grams. I was also doing other things at the same time in the initial measurements and five, 10 minutes would go by when I realized I had to go back downstairs to take more readings. And in some cases, the pressure in the tank might have leaked out if I didn't shut the valve at the base tight enough. It would just have enough of a leak that it would drop by some amount of pressure. I was able after a while to feel comfortable in my estimate or in my reading, I should say, that between empty and 100 psi in the tank, that the setup that I had produced a difference of 12 grams on the scale. And at that point, I had a reasonable confidence in this general characterization of my setup. So once I was reasonably confident that a difference of 100 PSI produced a 12 gram difference in the reading, and at least for this amount, it appears to be relatively linear, that if I were to measure the difference of 15 PSI, or let's say 14.7 for atmospheric pressure, what would be the difference in the weight? I should be able to extrapolate the weight of the air from that sample. This is where things get a little bit tricky because first of all, the air compressor is off center on the tank. So it's actually a little bit off to one side, making the center of mass not in the middle, but off to one side, which happens to be closer to the fulcrum. The second challenge that I had was trying to quantify roughly where that center of mass would be, given that the ends of the tank are rounded. So there's a little bit of space that's missing on the tank that I'm showing as a square space over here. So given the fact that the tank is slightly rounded means that it's not really a full 18 inches wide. It might be 17 or it might be 16 and a half or something like that. And that also has a small bearing on how much of an overlap the tank has on this side of the balance board. I was also thinking what happens if you split the tank down the middle, then half the weight is on this side all being pushed down on the fulcrum and then you've got the remaining weight down on here. If you distill the downward vector for the entire apparatus to a single point on this board, that variation could be by quite a bit. 
when I did my initial calculations over here, I wasn't really paying too, too close attention. And I sort of approximated the center of weight to be this value here. And in hindsight, it probably should have been a little bit lower than that. But I had come up with a rough mechanical advantage of 6.65 to 1, approximately. And so now I was able to start estimating how much the air weighed. If I start with the average difference in reading, and in the video that I released that I had made for MC Tune, it was between 60 grams and 72.2 grams. So that would have been roughly 12.2 grams. If I multiplied 12.2 by the mechanical advantage, that would mean that the change in weight on the air compressor, wherever that happened to be on the board, should have been roughly equivalent to 81.1 grams or thereabouts. I found an air density calculator and they state that the air density at sea level with zero humidity is 1.225 kilograms per cubic meter. But since my air compressor is not a cubic meter, I have to convert the size of the tank from whatever it is to one cubic meter. It's a three gallon tank, so I went online and the formula is to divide by 0 0.0113562 in order to convert three gallons to a one cubic meter. And so that's what I did here. I divided the 81 grams that I had calculated by that amount. That would mean that for this, if I were to increase the size of the tank to one cubic meter, should theoretically have been at 100 PSI, 7.14 kilograms. The goal was to calculate what the air should have weighed at sea level. And so I took that 7.1 kilograms divided by 100 PSI and then multiplied it back out by 15 PSI, which means that according to this, I had calculated on my very rough computation 1.071 kilograms per cubic meter at sea level. Here I did a few other calculations and according to this, the tank's center of weight, if I were to use the 1.225 kilograms as the ideal goal, the center of the tank's weight should be 7.3 inches. As I was doing this, I was thinking to myself, what would be some of the various confounding variables that would throw those numbers off? The two main ones that came to mind, obviously, were, and I've already indicated here, I didn't do a very good job at quantifying the center of mass for the air in the tank for where it happened to be sitting on this balance bar. I would also venture a guess that if you were a mechanical engineer, this would not have been a 20 minute lecture. This probably would have lasted quite a long time, possibly even multiple semesters. So my conclusion here is that I have very little confidence that I got that number right. And I could probably come up with multiple reasons why I might think the center of mass might be a little bit further out giving less of a mechanical advantage, or if the center of mass was slightly further in, it might give me a little bit more of a mechanical advantage. And as a result, measured weight with this rig that I have set up could have a very wide margin of error. And then the other thing that I was thinking was, this was done in my basement, sitting right on top of concrete. There would be some humidity that would go through the concrete. The basement would have some amount of humidity. I did not know uh, what the humidity of the air in the basement was, nor did I measure the temperature either. And I don't know if the temperature would be involved. Given the entire range of measurement was done within minutes of each other, it might possibly have affected the slope slightly, but I would count more on the humidity being a bigger factor than the temperature. Initially, when I found this tool, I did a search for what, would, what was the 
weight of air per volume and this is what it found and that's why I saved that URL. I didn't even look at any of this but after evaluating the various options, we can see that at 15 PSI with 50% humidity and 18 degrees air temperature, the air density would be 1.232 kilograms per cubic meter. If I lower by 2 degrees, it's 1.241. If I change the humidity, and while the humidity does play a factor, the air temperature seems to have a far greater impact. What can I conclude from this experiment? My initial goal was to demonstrate that having an air compressor with 100 PSI in the tank weighs more than an air compressor that does not have any positive pressure in the tank. And without even trying, I was able to get fairly close to the official value with a 12.5% margin of error. That's going to be it for now. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up, the subscribe, all that other good YouTube stuff. I'm going to see you again in another video at some point soon enough. So I'll say bye for now.